Hey, math students, time for a little more trigonometry. Um, <clears throat> so in the past, we've seen how we can use trigonometric ratios to help us solve right triangles. And by solve, I mean figure out the link, all the lengths and all the uh, angles of a right triangle. And today what I want to do is I want to see <clears throat> how can I use those trigonometric ratios to help me figure out or to help me solve oblique triangles. Now you're probably thinking, Oblique triangle, oblique, what the heck is an oblique triangle? I know what acute is, I know what right is, I know what obtuse is, I know what scaling is. I had to look it up too. <laughs> an oblique triangle is just a non-right triangle, that's all. Okay, all right. So now, before we get to doing that though, I want to point something out, and that is this. I want to remind us about the sine and cosine of obtuse angles. Okay, so if you remember from before, we said we're going to put an angle in a, a um, standard form or a standard position. So that means one side is going out that way. That's the, the uh, uh, initial side. And then I'm going to have another side going out this way. Okay? And I'm going to have that go through the point x, y. And if we remember this distance here, r, which is the square root of x squared plus y squared, if we remember, then the sine of this angle here, theta, the sine of theta is going to be uh, y over r, and the cosine of theta is going to be x over r. This is review, okay? Now, take this angle and reflect it over the y-axis, okay? So now what we have is another point over here, the point negative x, y, and also notice that this angle over here must also be theta because it got reflected. So what does that say about this angle here? Well, that angle there must be a straight line, 180 degrees minus theta. So what do we see? We see that the sine of 180 degrees minus theta is still y over r because this is still r here, right? So that's still y over r and the cosine of 180 degrees minus theta is negative x over r. Now, what does all of this tell us? It tells us two very useful things. One is the sine of 180 minus an angle is the same thing as the sine of that angle. And the cosine of 180 minus an angle is the negative cosine of that angle. Because the cosine of 180 minus the angle, <laughs> minus theta, that's what I'm trying to say, was negative x over r, which is the negative cosine of theta. All right, those are the two things that I wanted to uh, sort of use as a preface to today's lesson. So now let's get into today's lesson. What we're going to do is we're going to look at, like I said, oblique triangles, and we're going to see how we can use, uh, in particular, the sine of an angle to help us figure out all the measures of that oblique triangle. Okay? So let's start with the example of... Well, let's start with a super general example, okay? Let's say we have a triangle. Uh, and uh, that looks like an isosceles triangle. It's not necessarily an isosceles. Matter of fact, here, let me just make this more obvious. Okay, there we go. So there is our triangle. I'm gonna call this A, I'm gonna call this B, and I'm gonna call this C. And uh, so that means this is B, and this is C, and this is little a. Okay, so um, what if I wanted to find the area of this triangle? Well, I know how to find the area of a triangle. The area is uh, one half times the base, and in this case, the base actually is B. That's kind of handy. Base times, huh, okay, the height. And I don't know what the height is, so let me just draw that in, okay? So this is. One half times base times height. That's what the area is. And so let's call this H for height. 
Now, what is H? Well, since this is, since these are both right angles right here, uh, I could say, well, I'm just going to look at this right triangle right here, and I know that the sine of angle A is going to be opposite over hypotenuse. That's H over C. And what that tells me is that H equals C times the sine of A. Okay. And uh, I also can look at this triangle over here on the right, and I can see that the sine of angle C is going to be opposite over hypotenuse. So the sine of C is H over A, and that means that H equals A times the sine of C. Okay, so what does that tell us? It tells us that the area of this triangle, there's two different ways of calculating the area. The area of this triangle is one half times B C sine of A. Okay, or it could also be one half times B times A sine of C. So I'm going to write that as one half A B sine of C. Okay, so it equals one half times B times the sine of A, and it also equals one half times A times, sorry, one half times B times C times the sine of A, and it also equals one half times A times B times the sine of C. I wonder if I could also say that it equals one half times A C sine of B. I wonder. Well, let's see. Uh, let's take this triangle and let's let's turn it around. Okay, so here um, I'm going to turn it and when I turn it, it's going to look kind of like this. It's going to look like uh, and actually B was a little bit of an obtuse angle. So it goes out like that. So this is now C. This is little a. This is B. Uh, this is little b. This is capital A and this is little c over here. So now, if I'm going to calculate the area, this time the area would be one half. Now remember, the area here is going to be the same as the area over here. I haven't changed the size of the triangle. I just rotated it around. That's all. Okay. So this time the area is going to be one half times base, which is a, times, huh. Okay, well this time in order to get a, uh, a height, I'm going to have to do this. Uh, I'm going to have to stretch this over like that, and I'll call this H. Um, so there's my H. And what can I see about H this time? Now remember, this is angle B, which means, ha ha, that this angle over here is the supplementary angle to angle B. So what that tells me is uh, the sine of angle B is going to be, what did we say? It's the same as the sine of the supplementary angle. So that's still going to be the same as this, as the sine of this angle, which is H over C. And that means that H equals C times the sine of B. And look at that. It means my area is one half times A C sine of B. Cool. Okay, so I have three different ways of calculating the area of this. And uh, let me uh, just changing my lighting a little bit, so I hope that this is easier to read now. Um, so, uh, well, th the fact that all of these give me the, the area tells me something interesting. And that is that all three of those, uh, all three of those equations must be the same thing. That basically one half times BC sine of A has to equal one half times uh, AB sine of C, which is the same thing as one half times AC sine of B. And if that's the case, I can just multiply all three sides of my equation by two and all the one halves go away. And then I can divide all three sides of my equation by ABC and I get a very interesting result. 
let's see. Uh, here the B's and C's, I can simplify my fraction that way. Here I can simplify the A's and B's away. Here I can simplify A and C. And I end up with the sine of A, sine of angle A over A, equals the sine of angle C over C, which also equals the sine of angle B over B. And that is a very useful result. This is frequently referred to as the law of sines. It's also sometimes referred to as the sine rule. And, to, you know, I don't like either one of these names because to me, a law or a rule is something that you have to obey. This has nothing to do with obedience here. This is just how it is. So to me, I would call this the sign property. Okay? That's what I'm going to call it. But you know how many math books are going to call it the sign property? <laughs> this many, okay? Not a single one. They're all going to call it the law of signs or the sign rule. So, you know, just kind of, I'm not in charge yet. So, now, you may be thinking to yourself, um, okay, so, so what? Well, let me give you an example of why this is helpful. And let's just write the law of sines up here, or the sine rule. Let's write the sine property up here, which is the sine of A over A equals the sine of B over B, which equals the sine of C over C. Another way of saying this is the sines of the angles are proportional to the, uh, the sides opposite those angles. Okay, so uh, let's take a look at this example here. Let's say I've got a triangle. That's not a very good marker. Um, let's say I've got a triangle here, and uh, this will be A, B, C, and A, and C, and B. And what I know is that angle A is 50 degrees, and angle B is uh, 110 degrees and that side A is going to be 9 centimeters. And so what I want to know is, what's angle C, what's side C, and what's side B? Easy. Okay, first off, let's do the really, really, really easy one, which is angle C. The three interior angles of, an, of a triangle have to add up to 180 degrees, and let's see, these two add up to 160 degrees, so I'm going to call this 20. Okay? By the way, in case you were thinking, yeah, I knew it was going to be something small by the way he drew the triangle. <laughs> yeah, well, don't trust how I draw triangles, okay? I'm terrible at estimating what a triangle is going to look like. So I kind of feel like all my triangles, I just ought to draw them like that because uh, I, I frequently get them really, really wrong. So, and that's not just me. That's kind of everybody. Don't ever look at a triangle and think, oh, yes, I can tell by the way they drew it uh, what this is going to be. No, people pretty much never draw things to scale. Okay, so let's go back over here. Um, so let's see what we know. What we know is the sine of A, so the sine of 50 degrees over little a, over 9, equals the sine of 110 degrees over little b, and that equals the sine of uh, 20 degrees over little c. And you know something? Sometimes it actually helps to write this as reciprocals. You don't have to do it this way, but sometimes it really helps to say, I'm just going to say that 9 over the sine of uh, 50 is B over the sine of 110, and that equals uh, C over the sine of uh, 20 degrees. Um, like I said, sometimes I just find it helpful to think of the law of sines, to think of the sine rule as uh, um, reciprocals of each one. And it, it works. It's, you know, obviously if one thing equals another thing, then the reciprocal of that thing equals the reciprocal of the other thing. Um, okay, well, uh, let's solve for B first. 
So if I have these two fractions here, and I multiply both sides of the equation by sine of 110, then what I get is b is going to be uh, 9 times the sine of 110 over the sine of 50. Cool. Okay. Well, I will just take my uh, calculator and look at that. And what did my calculator tell me? My calculator told me that that is approximately equal to 11.04 centimeters. Good. So this is about 11.04 centimeters. And by the way, everything is going to be about. Okay, it's, almost all of our answers are going to turn out to be irrational numbers, so we're going to do some rounding. We do a lot of rounding when we're measuring triangles. Okay, and now let's look at uh, C. C is going to be, so now we're looking at this fraction and this fraction. So if I multiply both sides by the sine of 20, I get that C is 9 times the sine of 110 over the sine of 20 degrees. You can see how this is almost the exact same uh, uh, arithmetic that I'm doing here. And this turns out to be 4.02 centimeters. Okay? So this will be 4.02 centimeters. All right. Cool. Well, that was easy enough. So basically what I'm seeing here is that if I have two angles of a triangle, then I pretty much have the third angle too. You just subtract from 180. And if you have the angles and one side, you can figure out those other two sides very easily just by using this identity right there. All right, well, cool. Uh, let's look at another example. And uh, so this time, let's look at this one. Let's look at the example that says, and again, don't trust my drawing. Um, so this is going to be A, this is going to be B, this is going to be C, this is side B, this is side A, this is side C. And we're going to say that A is 50 degrees again. And this time C equals 16, uh, let's say 16 inches, and A equals 13 inches. So this time we don't have two angles. This time we have two sides and an angle. Okay. Well, let's see what we got. Uh, we have uh, the sine of 50 over 13 equals the sine of B over B. Oh, two unknowns in the same fraction. And that equals the sine of C over 16. Okay. It's pretty obvious that the first thing we ought to try to find is angle C because we don't have enough information about the B's. So uh, if I multiply, if I look at this fraction and this fraction, multiply both sides by 16, I get that the sine of angle C is going to be uh, 16 over 13 times the sine of 50 degrees. Okay, I can do that. Uh, I can calculate the sine of, uh, of let's see, did I? Uh, <laughs> I hope I did. Okay, yes, I did. 16 over 13 times the sine of 50 degrees is, it's approximately 0 0.94282. I'll take it to five digits. Okay, all right, well, shoot, I would just grab my calculator, do the inverse sine of C, okay? Have we talked about that yet? I think, yeah, yeah we have talked about that, okay? When you're looking for an angle, and you have, you have the sides, but you're looking for an angle, use the inverse uh, trig function. So if the sine of C equals 0.94282, then the measure of angle C is going to equal the inverse sine of 0.94282. And that's going to be, uh, what is the inverse sine of that? It's going to be uh, 70.53 degrees. Okay, cool. So this will be 70.53 degrees. All right. Except that's not the only thing that it, that it could equal. Because let's remember what we said earlier. The sine of an angle and its supplementary angle are exactly the same. 
So actually there's two angles. Think about the possible angles of a triangle. Possible angles of a triangle are anything greater than zero and anything less than 180. So that means angles of a triangle can be obtuse or it can be acute or obtuse. So maybe this triangle doesn't look like this. Maybe it looks like this, where this one is 13 inches. Ooh, that means C would be this angle here, which would be an obtuse angle. And well, what angle would that be? Well, it's gotta be the angle that is supplementary to 70.53 degrees in order for it to be, uh, in order for it to have the same sign. So 180 minus 70.53 is gonna be equal to, uh, what's that, 109.47 degrees. Oh, wow, so I end up with two possible answers. This is what's known as the ambiguous case, okay? I end up with two possible different answers for C, and if I end up with two uh, different answers for C, then when I take A plus C and subtract that from 180 to get B, I'm also gonna get two different answers, okay? And as you can see from my drawing here, that if C is an obtuse angle, B is gonna be very, very small. And if C is an acute angle, then B is gonna be larger than that. All right, well, let's, let's find out what it is. Um, I'm running out of room here, aren't I? Okay, let's come over here. So let's see, uh, measure of angle C, uh, measure of angle C uh, can be, um, like I said, 70, here, let me scoot further over. Uh, measure of angle C can be 70.53 degrees or 109.47 degrees. If that's the case, well, okay, then the measure of angle B is going to be, if it's, whoop, Mr. Zero, 70.53. If it's 70.53 degrees, then B, uh, in order for A plus B plus, A plus B plus C, to equal 180, B would have to be 59.47 degrees. Or if C is 109.47, then B would be 29.47 degrees. And now I would just take uh, the, uh, 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 to figure out what B, what little b is gonna be, this thing right here, I'm gonna say, well, okay, uh, B is gonna be 13, times the uh, sine of angle A, which is 50, over, am I doing this right? Yes. Nope, I'm sorry. It's gonna be the sine of angle B over the sine of 50 degrees, okay? And since we have two different answers for the sine of angle B, we're gonna get two different answers for side B, okay? Either, by using this angle, I'm gonna get 14.62, or by using this angle, I'm gonna get uh, 8.35, okay? So I get two possible answers. Now you may be saying, well, what good is that if you, if you can't get exactly one answer? Look, I, I took it from infinity possible answers to two possible answers. That's pretty good, okay? So frequently in a real life setting, you would look at one of these two answers and say, well, that obviously doesn't work. It's gotta be the other one, okay? Let me show you another example now. So this time we're gonna take uh, another triangle. And again, let's, uh, let's have uh, angle A be 50 degrees and uh, and I'm going to have, uh, again, well, let's see. Let's do it like this. Uh, we're going to have little a be 18 inches. And this is little c is still going to be 16 inches. I think that's what we had last time, isn't it? Yeah. So I'm changing the 13 to an 18. And everything else is going to stay the same. Okay? Well, okay, so uh, let's, let's come up with our, our ratios. So the sine of 50 over 18 is going to be the sine of uh, B over B, which is going to be the sine of C over 18. And again, let's start by finding C. So we're going to say uh, the sine of C is, uh, whoa, 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 no, 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 16. Sorry about that. <laughs> okay, 
Yeah, little c is 16. So uh, when I looked over here, I saw the same denominator twice. That could not be. So, uh, uh, well, it cannot be in this particular case. So yeah, now it's set up right. So if I multiply both sides of this by 16, I get the sine of C is 16 over 18 times the sine of 50 degrees. And what is that? Uh, that is approximately equal to 0 0.68093. Okay? So that means the measure of angle C is the inverse sine of 0 0.68093 which is going to get me 42.92 degrees. And remember, we said it's going to be that or it's going to be the supplementary angle. Okay, so the supplementary angle to that would be 138.18 degrees. Now, as it turns out, in this particular case, there's only one answer. Yes, the ambiguous case is very, very ambiguous. Not only does it sometimes get you two uh, different answers, but it doesn't always get you two different answers. Sometimes you just get a unique answer, and this is one of those times. And you may be wondering, well, how can you tell? Well, look, let's just, let's just assume that there are two different answers, right? So what's the measure of angle B going to be? Okay, well, in order for 50 plus 42.92 degrees, in order for that to equal uh, uh, 180 plus whatever measure of angle B is, this would have to be 87.08 degrees, okay? And if C is 138.18 degrees, well then uh, 50 plus 138.18 plus B is going to be 180. But there's a problem. 50 plus 138.18 is 188.18. That already exceeds 180 degrees, so no. That can't be, okay? So there are, if you want to, you can look at these triangles and you can memorize certain things about, okay, when am I going to have one uh, uh, answer? When am I going to have two answers? When might I have, I have no solution at all. The easiest way in my mind is assume that you have two and start working them out. And at some point you're going to say, no, that can't be. And then so, okay, now I just have one or possibly none at all. So. I throw that one away and I get the measure of angle B is uh, 87.08 degrees. And then I say, okay, well, that means that uh, B, little b, is going to be uh, 18. Okay. Uh, yes, it's going to be, I'm now looking at this, these two fractions. And I know that B is the sine is uh, 87.08. So it's going to be 18 times the sine of 87.08 degrees over the sine of 50 degrees. And for that, I get 23.47 inches. Okay. So uh, that was good. That time I got lucky. I only, uh, I found exactly what the triangle had to be. Um, all right. I'm going to show you one more example. Uh, and that is, let's look at this example here, where this time I'm going to have almost the exact same triangle, except this time I'm going to get A is going to be 12.2 inches. Okay? Again, set up my, uh, my ratios. So uh, this is a little d. So the sine of 50 degrees over 12.2 equals the sine of B over B equals the sine of 16 degrees, sorry, uh, equals the sine of, nope, I'm looking for angle C, there we go, over 16 inches, okay? All right, well, again, let's find uh, angle C. So that means we have the sine of angle C equals uh, 16 over 12.2 times the sine of 50 degrees. And that equals, well, when I calculated that, I got a number that was slightly bigger than 1. Uh-uh. That can't happen. Why can that not happen? 
Think about how we originally defined the, the sine of, a, of an angle. We said, uh, here, this, uh, well, we said the sine of an angle, if you're given a right triangle, is going to be the opposite over the hypotenuse. If the opposite over the hypotenuse is greater than one, that means the opposite has to be bigger than the hypotenuse. No, 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 that doesn't work. You can't have a triangle where the hypotenuse is not the greatest uh, 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 side. So this one just simply doesn't work. And basically what it would look like if I had accurate measurements here is I would have, uh, let's see, we don't know how long this is. It's just going out that way. And this side would come down here and not quite make it. It would just be kind of dangling there going, oh, I'm trying to reach this, this uh, base down here, but I can't make it because I'm not long enough. So yeah, basically what we have is not a triangle. So to sum up, you can use the sine rule, the law of sines, the sine property. You can use that to solve oblique triangles if you are given two, uh, uh, two angles, because then you can find the third one really easily, and a side. That's no problem at all. If you are given two sides and an angle, then you get the ambit. Well, hold it. Let me, let me say that differently. If you are given, let's two sides and one of the angles, okay? Not the angle that's included by those two sides, but a different one. Then uh, you have that ambiguous case and you have to start assuming that you have two different answers until you find out that maybe you don't, okay? Now, there's one case that we haven't looked at yet, and that is, what if you have two sides and the included angle, okay? So let's say we have A, B, and C here, and we know that this side is uh, 9 inches, this side is 11 inches, and this angle right here is uh, 72 degrees. Well, then setting up my, uh, this is going to be A, and this C equals this, B equals that, setting up my uh, fractions, I would get the sine of 72 over a equals the sine of b over 9 equals the sine of c over 11. And now I have a problem because none of these fractions is complete. In the past, on the other problems we were working on, we always had one of those fractions. Either I would know both angle A and side A, or both angle B and side B. One of my fra fractions would give me like a number, something that I actually knew. I don't know anything here. So I need a new tool. And that new tool is called the law of cosines or the cosine rule, or as if you're me, you call it the cosine property. But I think we're gonna wait for another video for that. I think this is probably enough. All right, see you then.